Body wash? Try Olay Body Wash with skincare super ingredient collagen. Olay Body Wash hydrates for healthier looking skin in just 14 days. From dry and dull to firm and radiant. With Olay Body, I feel fearless in my skin. With New Chapter Multivitamin Gummies, you get so much more than just mm. more nutrients, more research, and more organic ingredients. You also get less sugar, and that means less candy posing as vitamins. New Chapter. That's wellness well done. Tomorrow on ET, our William Shatner exclusive boldly going there about his Star Trek riff. And yes, that happening now. Dark money and fiery words and two dueling press conferences here on the Bear County Courthouse steps today amid a contentious race for the Bear County judge seat, who the Republican candidate claims is behind recent attack ads against her. This gorgeous weather continues for us, but it does come at a cost, a lack of rainfall. Coming up, we're gonna take a look at the state of some of our local lakes. You've barely started carving the jack-o'-lantern and already retailers are rolling up the holiday sales. Coming up, we'll tell you where to look for the bargains in October and what top tested products are on deep discount. The news at five starts right now. Fiery words today over accusations of dark money attack ads. The Republican candidate for Bear County Judge Trish DeBerry leveling some heavy accusations against a local media company as well as a well-known local lawyer. She says they're behind mysterious group that is running ads against her, but it's all a he said, she said. Our Garrett Berger tells us how her opponent struck back. Trish DeBerry would crawl across. It's an ad you may have seen, possibly on KSAT paid for by a group calling itself Friends of Bear County LLC or Friends of Bear LLC. Though definitely no friend of the Republican candidate for county judge, Trish DeBerry. These are baseless attacks and these are unwarranted attacks. DeBerry called the group a dark money corporation formulated in Delaware. And she claims she has, quote, multiple sources that say Bob Wills of the advertising agency, the PM Group, and one of his clients, personal injury attorney Thomas J. Henry, are behind it. I can't provide you formal documentation today. All I can do is say we're filing an ethics complaint. The AG is going to investigate. Hopefully the DA is going to investigate. The response from Bob Wills was swift, though. He held a press conference in the same location just three hours later. This is nothing more than a political stunt to bring attention to her campaign that is far, far behind. Wills said he is supporting Democratic candidate Peter Sakai but denied any connection to Friends of Bear County, LLC. And as for his client, Thomas J. Henry. I can say categorically he does not have any connections because any time Mr. Henry has given money to place to support a campaign, he would route it through us. Sakai is also denied having anything to do with the negative campaign, but DeBerry thinks he's lying. And she's asking Sakai to disavow and condemn the ads. In a statement texted from his campaign manager, Sakai said he would not waver from his commitment to run a positive campaign and pointed to DeBerry's comment that she didn't have any documentation linking him to the negative campaign. He said in part, quote, As a judge for 26 years and a firm believer in the rule of law, it is critical to have concrete evidence when making an allegation. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. New today at 5, a former Bear County Sheriff's deputy back in hot water in what may have looked like a bizarre incident. Brandon Doge has been arrested again, this time for allegations that he hurt two people while working at SeaWorld while wearing a pig costume. This comes three years after he was caught on camera assaulting an inmate at the Bear County Jail. Now the 29-year-old is accused of body slamming a 14-year-old boy and punching a 53-year-old man at a Westside theme park late Sunday night. San Antonio police say all this while dressed as a pig. Before this latest felony injury to a child charge, Doge was on probation for the 2019 jail assault. Late last year, he pleaded no contest to a reduced charge. Now to that investigation involving migrants moved from here in San Antonio to Martha's Vineyard. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says they have spoken with some of those migrants, but they still have not identified any persons of interest in their investigation. This all comes as the New York Times identified the woman accused of luring the migrants onto flights as Perla Huerta. She's reportedly a former combat medic and counterintelligence agent and was discharged after serving two decades in the U.S. Army. The story has developed since a flight left San Antonio last month and ended up taking 50 asylum seekers to the Massachusetts resort town of Martha's Vineyard. 
Florida's governor took credit for those flights. One migrant told CNN the woman named Perla offered him food, clothes and money in exchange to find others to board the flight to Massachusetts. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott has sent buses of asylum seekers to other parts of the country. And during Friday's debate, he said more cities should expect similar trips. There will be other cities in the future that also will be on the receiving end of migrants because we will continue to have to move migrants. Abbott has not said what other cities could be affected. So far, he has sent buses of people to Chicago, New York and Washington, D.C. Right now, one man hospitalized and a San Antonio police officer on administrative duty after gunfire at a local McDonald's. It happened overnight near Blanco Road and West Avenue. The SAPD officer was answering a different call when he noticed a car. Police Chief William McManus says the officer tried to talk to the driver, but that driver took off, hitting the officer in the leg with the car. Once he was struck, uh, he drew his firearm and uh, fired multiple times into the car, striking the driver. That man taken to a hospital. The officer under investigation has been with the department for a little over a year. New details now in a deadly crash during the morning rush. The medical examiner's office confirming a 46-year-old woman was hit and killed on Randolph Boulevard. It happened around 6.30 this morning between O'Connor and Judson Roads on the northeast side. An identity has not yet been released, and officers say the woman was a pedestrian, but they are still trying to figure out what caused that crash. Now to your money. Inflation and rising interest rates has got a lot of people talking. So today the city put the subject on the table at a luncheon to help small business owners. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the Asian American community is one of the fastest growing communities in San Antonio and they represent a large portion of businesses. Today's luncheon was organized to gather these business leaders together and let them know what resources are now available. Mayor Nuremberg says our economy remains resilient, partly because of the military. Now to Uvalde, where protesters continue for a sixth day outside the Uvalde CISD administration building. Parents camped out demanding accountability for the deaths of 19 students and two teachers back in May. They want the district officers that stood in the hallway that day suspended pending an investigation. A gate went up at that building shortly after the protest began last week. And we've also learned a town hall meeting scheduled for today has since been canceled. Our Lee Waldman is in Uvalde searching for answers. We'll have a report from her tonight on the Night Beat. CPS Energy appears to be making progress in Florida. They are one of many utilities stepping in to help Lakeland, Florida after Ian swept through last week. Today, Lakeland's utility said another 1,100 customers had their power restored since last night. So far, 94% of the outages have been restored, and the hope is to get everyone in that city back online by the end of tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Red Cross is also helping with recovery efforts in Florida, and you can help too. Ursula Perry now joining us live from the KSAC Community Phone Bank. Thank you, Tim. The Red Cross has had a really tough time this year dealing with hurricanes, and we're still in it. We have this KSAC Community Phone Bank going, but the phones are not ringing. You can help the folks in Florida. That's what this is all about. You can call 210-351-1363. And earlier today, Daniel Martinez warned us or gave us <laughs> gave us a hint that someone was going to be donating a lot of money. Let's watch yeah. that uh, video of a donation that came in that was quite nice. On behalf of Parking, we'd like to donate this to you. Uh, anything we can do to help. We are a free digital platform that help uh, multifamily and commercial properties manage parking. Great, thank you. All right, so that's $10,000. That can yes. be matched, right, Daniel? Absolutely. Our goal today is to raise at least uh, that much by getting these phone lines ringing. That's what we love to see in here. And that 10000 is so far reaching. Right now, with that money, we're going to be able to provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks for 400 people, deploy two of our emergency response vehicles, and comfort kids for 700 So truly far reaching. And every day, this hurricane is costing how much money in Red Cross dollars? Millions of dollars per day. Operating the shelters alone is 500000 So you add to that the cost of our uh, volunteers who, are get who get deployed, our uh, emergency response vehicles, and other resources on top of what we provide to families. So it's a lot. It's a lot. 
And one thing we need to point out, uh, as you're sitting at home wishing it would rain, they are still undergoing a dramatic disaster. We're talking people are still cut off. We're talking people still have no place to call home. And roads are flooded. The island, Sanibel Island, is cut off, Captiva Island. These are things that are ongoing. So we don't know how much more money we're going to need to keep this going. Absolutely. So right now, preliminary numbers, we know that the American Red Cross alone, aside from our partner agencies, will be investing upwards of $70 million. Wow. So it's, it's a huge investment, which is why every dollar counts. The phone number to call, 210-351-1363. Keep the calls coming. Is a tropical depression Orlean? It is uh, out there. It mm -hmm. hit Mexico. And where are we expecting this to go next? Right, Tim. You may have noticed there are some height and cirrus clouds around San Antonio. This is actually streaming in from Orlean. Orlean made landfall huh? as a Category 1 hurricane right on the Nayarit and the Sinaloan border there. But it has since weakened to a tropical depression falling apart across Mexico. We're not going to be seeing any rain from that, unfortunately. Just these height and cirrus clouds that are out there. It's been a warm but pleasant day generally across KSAT 12 viewing area. Temperatures have been in the 80s, a little bit closer to San Antonio, 85 in Bulverde. Coming up, we're going to talk about how this pleasant weather will continue, but something that's a little unfortunate is that it comes at the cost of some uh, rainfall for us. We're really not going to see much rain in San Antonio over the next several days, and that doesn't necessarily bode well for our local area lakes. All of those details coming up. Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. New today at five, you can call it the holiday creep. Store shelves are stocked with Halloween costumes at the same time they also have the Christmas sweaters. It's an obvious sign that retailers are getting an early start on holiday sales this year, but it's also a good chance for shoppers to stretch their spending too. 12 Under Size Marilyn Moore shows us where some of those sales are for October. We've barely started carving the pumpkin and retailers are beginning to roll out holiday blockbuster sales. With two multi-day site-wide sales this month, Target Deal Days and Amazon's Prime Early Access Sale, you'll be able to find deals that come close to what we expect for Black Friday on giftable items like tech devices, kitchen appliances, fitness equipment, apparel, toys, and so much more. Amazon's already showing some of its devices up to 70% off. Consumer Reports tracks prices on its top tested products all year, so here's what to look for this month. The long weekend around Indigenous Peoples Day, also called Columbus Day, is typically deal time on mattresses and big appliances. Kitchen need a cooking upgrade? This LG Electric Smooth Top range is now $764 at LG and the Home Depot. That's $85 off. And now that Apple's new phone is out, October is a great month to find lowered prices on top-rated previous models. The iPhone SE is $429 at Amazon. Consumer Reports says this is the best iPhone price less than $500 that it's tested. And finally, you can keep the home temperature just right with a new thermostat. This Honeywell is $155 at Amazon. A worry about shopping early is what if the sale is better later? Well, look out for price match guarantees. For example, beginning Thursday, if you buy something at Target and the price drops lower before Christmas, they'll refund the difference. So save the receipts. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's check in quickly on your Monday evening commute home. Taking a look here with Transguide at 281 and Loop 410. You can see the flashing lights there. There is an accident impacting the southbound lanes. Looks like at least uh, one lane is open, but a definite slowdown there at 281 and 410 on the north side. San Antonio is, of course, known for our Alamo, but that's not the only piece of history that the city holds. We're going to show you a local library revealing a lot about Mexican-American experiences here at home. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's what we're working on for you. Coming up on the news at 6 o'clock today, a convicted ex-constable back in court today. The sentencing hearing for Michelle Buddy and this Vela starting back up after weeks of delays. The combative back and forth between her attorney and one of her former deputies. Plus. 
Thousands of people do it, but are we doing it the right way? In a new case that explains, we're talking recycling and organics. What can go in each of those bins? And what happens to all that stuff when it leaves your curb? We're also talking about some of the items that people have the biggest questions about. Yes, that includes plastic bags. We're going to break it all down for you in a new case that explains that and more coming your way today at six. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Myra. San Antonio isn't just known for the Alamo and its importance to the birth of Texas independence. It's also where the struggle began in Texas for Mexican-American civil rights in the 1960s and 70s. Jesse De Rialdo shows us some of the treasure trove of materials revealing the Mexican-American experience at the UTSA's Library Special Collections. Familiar places like St. Mary's University, the West Side's Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center, and its neighbor across the street, the Guadalupe Theater, are among the places and people in mapping the movimiento, tracing San Antonio's struggle for Mexican-American civil rights. The 15 sites represent only a slice of the many places around the city that galvanized a generation of Chicano activists. The interactive use of narration and photos from the UTSA Library's special collections has an added purpose. We really want to get the material out there. The director of UTSA Special Collections, Amy Rushing, says materials like this from the civil rights era, which flourished in San Antonio, should be shared, not locked away. We don't want to be gatekeepers. We want to be a gateway. It's for the community. These stacks are filled with boxes of donated materials from the Southwest Voter Registration Education Project, dating back to when Willie Velasquez started it in 1974. And with more materials digitized, it's possible to flip through the scrapbook kept by the late labor leader, Jaime Martinez. Among his many causes, renaming Durango Cesar Chavez Boulevard. Or follow the United Farm Workers' fight for better wages and working conditions in Texas, led by Rebecca Flores. She remembered every event, every person. Making the most of what's here, she says, is especially vital for students attending a Hispanic-serving institution. Who knows like what could be taken from you or how things can change. And so it's definitely important to be able to look back and take lessons from those that came before us. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Looking outside with live cam. It has been a beautiful day, but you kind of have to squint so you don't see the brown grass. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, you nailed it on the head, Ursula. The really nice weather coming at the cost of not seeing any rain here in San Antonio. It's been very dry. We're going to take a look at Medina Lake here in a bit, but first I want to show you outside. We've got height and cirrus clouds streaming in. Temperatures are comfortably in the mid to upper 80s. Low humidity, it feels great. Again, these cirrus clouds coming all the way from what was Hurricane Orlean, now Tropical Depression Orlean, as it's fallen apart uh, across parts of Mexico, but it did make landfall as a Category 1 hurricane right between Mazatlan and Puerto Vallarta. As we look at the uh, Orleans path, it is expected to completely fall apart by the overnight hours, but we're still going to be seeing some of these clouds from that. No rain, unfortunately, for us across South Central Texas, but some cirrus clouds throughout the day tomorrow, partly cloudy skies for us. They still a very nice day. We'll be waking up early tomorrow morning in the low 60s, a little bit warmer than it was out there the last couple of mornings. Sunrise tomorrow close to 730. As we look around San Antonio, upper 50s in the hill country and around San Antonio close to 60 degrees early tomorrow. We'll be looking at temperatures topping off tomorrow in the upper 80s, a little bit warmer than seasonably average, but pretty comfortable. Again, the nice weather at the cost of drought. Uh, you can see that exceptional and extreme drought around San Antonio with the worst of it out toward New Braunfels and Seguin. And as we look at Medina Lake, Medina Lake is only seven and a half percent full. It's gone down by more than 12 feet just in the last uh, three months. And unfortunately, no rain in sight. Medina Lake, the lowest it's been since 2015, right before those Memorial Day floods that many of us remember so well. And as we look at rain chances over the next several days, there's only only a small 10% chance on Friday and Saturday. Really, the rain should be closer to the Rio Grande Valley. Again, a quiet weather pattern for us over the next several days. At least those mornings will be cool. The afternoons will be comfortable. If we have to have the drought, at least the weather is nice.
True. Ursula. All right. Thank you, Sarah. All right, Greg. Cooper Rush may be a backup quarterback, but he's done something no Cowboys starting quarterback <laughs> has done. This is amazing because since that first loss in the first game of the season, the Cowboys have gone undefeated, and they've done it with a backup quarterback who's won all of the starts dating back to last year. No Cowboys quarterback has ever been able to do that, either the starter or the backup. When we come back, more about this incredible feat and lots to learn for the Spurs and the Texans when we come back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. What an amazing story. Cooper Rush has been filling in for the injured Dak Prescott with a win against Washington on Sunday. Becomes the first Cowboys quarterback in the team history to win his first four starts dating back to last year. Three of those coming this season after Dak was injured in the season opening loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Since that time, the Cowboys have reeled off three straight victories, including their 25-10 win over the Commanders. Rush, by the way, threw for two touchdown passes, including this one to Michael Gallup, his first in his first game back from offseason surgery and his ACL. After the game rush gave all the credit to everybody else four and is just i mean you guys saw it today the defense and you know all the, all the breaks we catch and you know it's just kind of lucky qb win stats are they are what they are um it's a team game they tell this you know in all our team meetings just do your job that's all you got to do because we know where you know we we know what we are uh and he handles it very well so um props to coop because you know he's he's been doing that a lot of people just didn't know all right, all indications are Dak will try and make the comeback this Sunday against the Rams in L.A. And KSAT 12 Sports will be there. Meantime, the Houston Texans are still looking for their first win of the season after falling to the L.A. Chargers 34-24. One big bright spot in the loss was the performance of rookie running back Damian Pierce, who scored the longest touchdown of his career, 75 yards in the second quarter to finally get the Texans on the board. He would finish the game with 131 yards on 14 carries. We didn't finish the game the way we need to. Along the way, some good things happened. Uh, of course, Damon Pierce uh, ran well throughout. Um, so that gave us some, you know, he gave us a spark. The Texans next travel to Jacksonville on Sunday for a noon kick. Our San Antonio Spurs tipped off their 2022 preseason last night in Houston. Remember, this is a very young team. With both Keldon Johnson and Josh Primo out with injuries, it would be up to Devin Vassell to lead the Spurs, scoring 13 points in 19 minutes. But like his teammates, struggled from the field, shooting only 31%, with a team only managing to shoot 26%. Malachi Branham led all, all the rookies with 10 points in the 134-96 thrashing. If we're not hitting shots, we got to still be competitive. We still got to play on the defensive end. We got to hang our hats on the defensive end. Uh, we don't have KD talent, you feel what I'm saying? So we can't sit here and rely on the offensive end. Good news, they have a home preseason game this Thursday. Hopefully a little better return. Could be a long season. It could be, yes. I think it will be, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Once again, another cool morning tomorrow will be at 62 degrees. Already in the 80s by lunch, 88 degrees for the afternoon high, low humidity, light and variable winds. Really pleasant weather over the next several days for us. There will be a few showers and storms in the Rio Grande Valley on Friday and Saturday. Uh, that only brings us a 10% chance for a stray shower. Not going to cut it. We're in the middle of extreme and exceptional drought around San Antonio. But again, at least the weather is pretty nice outside. It's a consolation. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. See you back here for the News at 6. World News is next.